pilots have been instructed from the very beginning of their training to keep an eye out for traffic. And most of us have also seen traffic much closer than desired. In this video, we take a look at the things we can do to reduce the risk of a mid-air collision. While there are times when events have temporarily disrupted the number of aircraft in our skies, forecasts show an ever-increasing growth in air traffic. While a mid-air collision is a relatively rare event, near mid-air collisions occur more often than you may think. During a recent four-year period, a total of 42 mid-air collisions occurred in the United States. During this same period, nearly 500 near mid-air collisions were reported there were undoubtedly many more near collisions that were not reported simply because they went unnoticed or the pilots involved neglected to make a report. The U.S. National Transportation Safety Board has issued a safety alert concerning mid-air collisions that spells out the problem with the traditional see and avoid concept as a preventative measure. While most of these events occur during daylight hours in good weather, when seeing other traffic might seem easy, there are many limitations to seeing other aircraft. These include human limitations, aircraft blind spots, operational distractions, and environmental conditions. It's important to understand when and where mid-air collisions are most likely to occur. As already mentioned, most of these adverse events occur during daylight hours with the majority occurring on weekends between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. during the warmer months. This is, of course, the time when most general aviation traffic is in the air. A leading aviation safety research organization has identified the fact that more than half of mid-air collisions occur within five miles of an airport, and that nearly all of these events occur below 3,000 feet AGL. More than 50% of collisions occur in the traffic pattern, and 80% of these are during approach to landing, with one aircraft overtaking another. So, how do we reduce the risk posed by the hazard of mid-air collisions? There are a number of long-standing traditional recommendations that can be implemented. These include tune, verify, and listen in on the tower or CTAF frequency well before entering the airport area. This gives you a chance to determine the amount of traffic to expect and their location in relationship to you. Report your position when 10 miles out and be sure you clearly understand ATC instructions. At non-controlled airports, report your position on downwind, turning base, and turning final, even if you don't see other traffic. If you aren't sure of another aircraft's position, ask for clarification. Check and clear final in both directions before making the final turn. And don't forget to report your position when outbound from a non-towered airport, especially if you're aware of inbound traffic. Okay, now with those basics covered, we need to revisit the NTSB's safety alert and recognize the inherent limitations of the see and avoid concept. As any experienced pilot will tell you, seeing other aircraft can be difficult, and this leaves even the most safety conscious pilot vulnerable to a mid-air collision. This is where technology comes in, augmenting pilot vision by depicting other aircraft on traffic displays and providing aural alerts. Certain systems even provide advisories to climb or descend to avoid traffic. With the ADS-B out mandate now fully implemented, most aircraft in the U.S. will be broadcasting altitude, heading, and velocity information to FAA ground stations and to other aircraft in the vicinity. This means that with equipment capable of receiving ADS-B in, you would be provided indications of most nearby traffic. How this information displays and the alerts associated with conflicting traffic is something that you should be very familiar with. You should also understand the various settings for display of traffic and be sure to select appropriate ranges for viewing. For example, on the Garmin G1000 NXI system, you can select the menu button on the MFD, then map settings, and under the traffic group, select to display traffic on the map. 
and then make selections for your traffic mode. Choices here are all traffic, traffic advisories and proximity advisories, and traffic advisories only. You can also select at which map range traffic symbols will appear, and at which range traffic labels will appear. If you operate in busy areas, your map will get very cluttered if you select too long of a range for these settings. When viewing the traffic page, you can select the altitudes at which you want traffic to appear. In below mode, you would see traffic from 2700 feet above to 9900 feet below. In normal mode, you would see traffic from 2700 feet above to 2700 feet below the aircraft. In above mode, you would see traffic from 2700 feet below to 9900 feet above. And in unrestricted mode, all traffic is displayed between 9900 feet above to 9900 feet below you. On the G1000 NXI, these selections can also be made using the soft keys on the bezel. When viewing the navigation map in busy areas, it's best to adjust the range to be able to see traffic in your immediate area. And the range adjustment should also be adjusted on the PFD traffic inset. On the G1000 NXI, the two range rings start at 40 and 24 nautical miles and can be adjusted down to two and one mile rings, which would be appropriate in the area of airports. Traffic symbols include a solid yellow circle or arrow for traffic advisories a solid white diamond or arrow for proximity advisories, and a hollow white diamond or arrow for other traffic that doesn't meet the threshold for higher level alerting. Aural alerts provided depend on your installed system. You may just hear traffic enunciated, which should draw your eye to the traffic display to look for the location of the traffic shown in yellow. More advanced systems provide the traffic alert plus location information, such as Traffic 7 o'clock, same altitude, 2 miles On most Garmin products, traffic symbols will include a line extending from the traffic symbol, indicating the direction of travel when in absolute mode and the direction of relative motion when in relative mode. Even when an airplane is ahead of you and heading in the same direction, if you're traveling at a faster speed than the target, the green relative motion line will point in your direction. Many other Garmin products provide for display of traffic, and regardless of what type of equipment you have installed, be sure to develop a thorough understanding of how to set up your traffic display, and how traffic will be displayed. Now, you may recall that in the preceding discussion that the word most was used in describing traffic that can be seen with ADS-B in. Take note that some aircraft have been excluded from the ADS-B out requirement, and that aircraft operating in certain types of airspace are not required to operate ADS-B equipment. So, the message here is that while technology can help, it's still necessary to keep an effective visual scan. Additional information about your role in collision avoidance can be found in the FAA Advisory Circular 90-48D. You'll find a link to this document in the description text for this video. We hope this video has helped you to understand the hazard of mid-air collisions and some actions you can take to mitigate this threat. To learn more about Garmin Avionics Systems, go to flygarmin.com and select the training tab. Thanks for watching and thanks for buying Garmin.